welcome to The New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and in today's episode, I'm the guest of Arrington Wilderness Island Resort, a gorgeous fly-in location located here in Northern Ontario. In today's episode, we're going to focus on catching pike on the fly. We're gonna try for streamers in different depths of water with lots and lots of weed beds. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Ontario Lodges and Outfitters look forward to welcoming international anglers when it's safe to travel once again. This week, I'm heading to Northern Ontario to visit my friend Morgan, whose family owns and operates Arrington's Wilderness Island Resort. I can't wait to spend time fishing Lake Wabatangushi, exploring the wilderness, and enjoying all of the wonderful activities that Arrington's Wilderness Island Resort has to offer. Situated in the southwest corner of the Shaplow Game Preserve, which is the world's largest game preserve, Arrington's Wilderness Island Resort boasts incredible wildlife sighting opportunities thanks to this very special location. For those seeking far more than a fishing adventure, this is one of the most affordable and accessible wilderness locations you can possibly visit. With this in mind, it's no wonder I was so excited. After a short and quick trip by float plane, I was soon at Arrington's Island Resort and was eager to hit the water with Morgan and start fishing. We put together our rods and equipment and headed out for an evening on the water. Despite our best efforts, we had no success catching fish this very warm evening. But that didn't matter, as we had success in having fun and enjoying a beautiful night together on the water. chance to chat with Al Arrington after breakfast. The fishing here is really, really easy. North, uh, the northern part of Wabatongish Lake where we are is extremely friendly. It's boating friendly, it's canoe friendly, it's uh, kayak friendly. We have all these islands and bays. We have incredible fishing habitat. Um, and, that, and the fishing habitat means we have large populations of fish. They're extremely healthy fishery here. And um, so it makes the fishing easy. We're not fishing deep. We're fishing mostly shallow. Walleyes, pike, um, perch, uh, they're all sh nice, shallow, easy easy fish to catch. Arrington's is, um, we, th we consider it a more uh, special place because um, to us, it's, fishing is just part of it. It's not the whole thing. Um, we really 
like to see people just immerse themselves in nature, just let all their stresses go away. And so we're not, um, we have a really relaxed view about um, fishing. We like to see people uh, take an interest in the other aspects of being out in the wilderness, um, explore other things. Um, so that's, I think, the most unique thing is that uh, it's, um, it's a wilderness vacation where fishing is part of the vacation, not the, the sole focus. At Arrington's Wilderness Island, we have both cabins and suites. The cabins tend to be the more favored accommodation just because each one is more secluded. They're actually secluded from each other. Each one has its own private dock, screened in porch. Um, so they're secluded, people are off by themselves. They're also fully set up for housekeeping so people can do their own cooking or they can go on a, a partial meal plan or a full meal plan. But in our accommodations, we also have our suites, which are more handy to lodge. Um, a little bit nicer too, sometimes for people with mobility issues and stuff, because they're right at, they're right at the main dock area with the suites. And the, that's always manned with someone who can help them get in and out of the boat and um, take care of them as far as any, any bait and stuff like that they may, and other services they might need. We wanted to go fishing, but it was so hot. So we decided to do some of the other great outdoor activities available at the resort. First, we went for a short hike and did some wilderness exploring. Then, after a wonderful dinner, we did some kayaking till dark. After all of this fresh air and exercise, I don't mind saying I was truly tired. Time for a great sleep. It's another beautiful day here on Lake Wabataguchi. We decided to try and beat the heat by getting up early and hitting the water. As I sipped my coffee in the boat on our way to the first location, I took in the splendor of the lake in the early morning sun. Today, the head guide at the resort, Aaron, is taking me out. Aaron is not only an accomplished spin fishing guide, but also a proficient and passionate fly angler. This morning we're in Partridge Bay. Uh, we, it has an outflow coming from Partridge Lake. It outflows to about three to five feet and drops off to about nine to 12 feet. So we're gonna start in shallow. Uh, we're gonna fish the shallower weed beds and we'll keep bumping out until we find the fish, find the proper depth, and hopefully we get into them. I would suggest starting out Jenna, with your floating line, we're going to be fishing three to five feet of water in front of a beaver lodge and some very shallow weed beds. As we move out and get closer to the drop-off, we'll move then to a sink tip line. Given Aaron's love for fly fishing, I suggested that he pick up his rod and join me. It's always exciting to work with a guide who loves fly fishing as much as I do. With two flies in the water, we didn't have to wait long for the action to begin. Oh, someone just took a swipe at it. Oh, there he goes. Nice Any little pike. Or little fella? Little fella. <laughs> that was nice. He took a swipe, he thought about it, and then, bam, hit the fly. Cool. It got him right in the corner of the mouth too, which is always nice. I'll bring him up for you there, Aaron. Oh. Awesome, thank you. It's always fun in clear water when you can see the take. fishing here is this new growth weed bed. Early in the mornings, I don't mind starting shallow even in mid-June when the water temps are up around 63 to 65 degrees. As long as there's some new growth weed beds coming up 
And of course, we have the shadows on the water. As soon as the sun gets higher, the shadows will recede. We'll move out to deeper water, hopefully following the pike. Oh. You got one? No, missed him. There he is. Got him? Yeah. Nice, any size? He does feel a little heavier. I don't That's know if good. he's the monster we're looking for, but. And what fly are you using? I'm using what's called a striper slayer. Oh yeah, not a bad little guy. There we go. A little beefier guy. Good fight on him anyways. Yeah. He's, he's right. enthusiastic. Thank you. Thank you. Although it's only mid-June, this entire region has been hit by unseasonably hot weather. Some days, the temperatures reached 30 degrees Celsius or more, which in turn dramatically impacted the fishing. Both pike and walleye went to the bottom to sulk and escape the rapidly warming waters. Net result? The fish stopped biting. It did not matter if it was a fly or a lure. We could not get the pike to strike other than little tiny ones. This is quite unusual. Oh, there's a pike. A little baby guy. Let's see, I'll get my line up here. Thanks. Good job. Thanks, Aaron. Several years before, Bill Spicer came to Arrington's Wilderness Island Resort and fished for walleye with great success. Let's look back on what Bill did to have success catching walleye on the fly. One of the dilemmas that you run into when coming to a strange lake is what do I do first? Now walleye traditionally is not what fly fishers go after, so I was kind of racking my brains as to what to do. So I went up to some of the fishermen here that were doing very well and asked them what they were using. And they said they were using this jerk bait. Now this jerk bait is also a suspension bait. Now what that means is when this goes down to a certain level, it remains there even if you stop it. So when they would jerk this and stop it, it would remain at three to four feet down. Well, what do I do here? I look at the color and maybe the size of, mainly I think in, it's the color. So what I did was I tried to match my fly the best way I could to it. Now, this isn't nearly as, as long, but I have the right color combination. And when this is wet, it looks almost the same type of green as that lure does. Now, how do I make that suspend? Well, what I did was I attached it to an intermediate sinking line. Now, this intermediate clear sinking line only sinks three to four feet. There was my suspension. I did that combined with the right fly and did exactly what the spin fishers were doing. I jerked it, jerk, stop, jerk, stop. And every time it stopped, I seemed to get a hit. And I was very successful doing that. The most productive fly was a chartreuse deceiver. But another good choice would be a chartreuse clouser minnow, an orange and black clouser minnow, and for the times when the walleye are eating leeches, a black bunny leech. Fish on. Fishing off a point here. Land points are big when fishing for walleye. It, whatever happens on land, the shape of the land, you, it continues underneath the water. And these fish will stack up and feed off these points. Got here. Haven't seen him as of yet. Nice Another one. walleye. It's a good one this time. Yeah, that's a nice walleye. It's a nice walleye, yeah. And again, land points. We've had a number of fronts, a number of fronts pass through. And we're waiting on good weather right now, and it looks like we got some stable weather, and we're getting more fish. It's been a pretty rough go. It's been a pretty rough go with the weather. Um, 
you can't help Mother Nature. Sometimes she works against you. But right now, the weather's stable and looks like the fishing's picking up. Fish on. Fish on. Fish and structure. All structure. You fish structure, you're gonna find fish. Again, I, I say it all the time, proper presentation with along with the fly, put it where it should be, and you'll have a success. Yeah, I think you got another walleye here. I think I got another walleye, yeah, he's staying down. Yep. Own this a little bigger. Ooh, got him, pass him back here, please. Sure. Yes, sir. Another uh, not, not eater. Not bigger. Another, another, another eating size. Whoop. <laughs> And a professional release again. Just slipped right out of my hands. I didn't want to hold on to them too tight. I'm going to release them. If I hold on to them too tight, I'll end up hurting them. As the sun sets on another hot day, we hope tomorrow is a little cooler and the fishing heats up. The Chaplow Crown Game Preserve is a fur-bearing animal preserve area in Ontario, northeast of Lake Superior. This vast preserve covers some 7,000 square kilometers, or 2,700 square miles. It was created due to the need to protect wildlife, such as moose and bears, from hunters and trappers. By the early 1900s, the number of fur-bearing wildlife in the region had been dramatically impacted due to nearby railroad access. Alarmed by the decrease in wildlife, William McLeod, who was a fur trader in Chaplow, went to the government and asked that the region be declared a preserve to protect all animals. Since 1925, the preserve has been a sanctuary for indigenous wildlife, which today now flourishes thanks to this pioneer of wildlife protection. It seems that every day we spotted new types of wildlife, from birds to even a mother bear and its cubs. This abundance of wildlife is one of the strong reasons why Arrington Wilderness Island Resort has long been a popular destination for nature lovers, families, and anglers who want to experience a true wilderness adventure. Today, Morgan and I are heading out for some fishing and I'm really looking forward to a shore lunch being set up later this afternoon. Fights really well, this guy. Try and get the, uh... there we go. Bring his head up. And I'm using a black and red fly called the Northern Magic that was taught to me by a guy in Saskatchewan named Chip Cromarty. There we go. There's a itty bitty fish, but he, oh, he's got a little bit of sweat to him. Try and keep him away from those weeds. <laughs> awesome, I'm gonna bring him right to you here, Morgan. Thank you. There we go. Thanks, You're welcome. So I'm seeing a lot of fish cruising here, but none above 18, 20 inches, which definitely concerns me. If the smaller ones are bold enough to be cruising out on the flatter areas here and not hiding in the weeds, that means the bigger fish have probably gone deep. The sun's pretty high. At this point in the day, it's starting to really heat up. They're probably looking for that relief and that coverage in the deeper weed beds. So it drops off as we get through this narrow here. And I might end up switching to my, uh, my sink tip line, see if I can get a little deeper, find some of those bigger fish. 
That was actually super awesome. The fish, I saw him, he followed my fly, he followed my fly. I kept trying to get it in front of him. And I think what did it, I was pulling too slowly before. My retrieve was too slow. This is a decent fish. Oh, my retrieve was too slow and I speeded it up and bam, he hit it. And thanks Morgan. Nice, no problem. Oh, look, ooh, ooh. He's feisty, it this is guy. He's feisty. Oh, look at that, right in the corner of the mouth. Let's give that guy a measure. Yeah. Do you need me to move this? Yes, please. Here you go. Thank you. Nice. So we got a 21 and almost three quarters. 21 and a half. Oh, actually, just moved it 22 inches. Nice. Excellent. That's awesome. Now let's get this gorgeous fish back in the water. All right. After some nice pike fishing, we met up with the rest of the crew from the resort for a shore lunch on one of the nearby islands. There is nothing better than battered and fried walleye and whitefish. Of course, topped off with onion rings and homemade corn fritters. Needless to say, I was stuffed. The rest of the day was very hot, so we relaxed, napped, and later that night enjoyed a great bonfire before bed. For pike and walleye fishing here at Arrington's, the best option is a 7 or 8 weight rod in a 9 foot length. You will generally be using a floating line, but I recommend you bring an intermediate or sink tip as well if you need to get your fly down in the water column. I've had a wonderful week here at Arrington Wilderness Island Resort. It was so much fun fishing for northern pike and I learned so much from both Morgan and Aaron. If you'd like to learn more about Arrington Wilderness Island Resort or our show, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Algoma Country, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Stay safe, stay healthy. Ontario will be here waiting for you when it's safe to travel.